What's that, everybody? Boy Big Brando, and today I'm gonna answer your questions. At the end of all my videos, I always say to leave your questions in the comments. A lot of people just DM me for whatever reason. I rarely check my DMs, so if you DM me a question, rarely do I ever check it. Why is that? Because I get hundreds of DMs every single day. A lot of times it's just questions regarding heat pressing or transfers, and I've already answered it in a video. Just people don't want to go back and watch the video so they just feel like asking the question in the dms is a little easier so if you do have a question it's easier for you to ask it in the comments because i'm more active in the comments here on youtube instagram TikTok. i'll see it faster and probably answer it a lot quicker maybe this will start a new series who knows but i didn't want to make five separate videos so all i'm going to do is just answer five questions in this video right here first one is going to come from ricardo Ricardo wants to know how do I find the time to juggle full-time job, running a business, making t-shirts, making YouTube videos. Now this might come as a big surprise to a lot of you guys, but I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I actually work a full-time job. I built a pretty good career around what I do for a living and I have no goals or intentions of quitting or leaving my job to create YouTube videos full time or to create t-shirts full time. As most of you guys know and some of you guys might, I'm a photographer by trade. My day job is I'm a photographer. Now before anybody asks, I'm not that type of photographer. A lot of people say, hey man, let me see some of your work, let me see your Instagram, let me see some of your photography. I'm not that type of photographer. I'm not shooting supermodels, I'm not shooting landscapes, I'm not shooting sunsets, I'm not shooting cars, none of that shit. I'm a corporate photographer and I've built a really dope career around it. So at the end of the day, I get paid to take pictures easy call. Now outside of that, how do I find the time? I will schedule myself two hours throughout the day to work on anything business related. Sometimes I do way more than two hours, but as a minimum, I make sure that I get two hours of work done towards the business. Pressing shirts, working on designs, marketing schemes, anything like that. A lot of times I'll go to work and then I'll come to this space right here and start getting to work on the business stuff. Or sometimes I might come here first, early in the morning before I go to my day job. Also, let me say this, but I'm not one of those, I only get two hours of sleep a night because I'm full-time hustler, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I don't do that shit. I like my sleep, I need my sleep. I don't believe in that thought process. Does that mean I'm not working hard? Fuck no, I am working hard. But I also know when and where to make sacrifices. For myself, I don't sacrifice family time. Time with my kids, time with my wife means more to me than YouTube or printing t-shirts or any of that shit. If I'm busting my ass this hard, what am I doing it for if it's not for my family? So I get shit done for the business, but I'm very efficient with my time. So when it comes to scheduling yourself time, if it's your business, schedule it like a business. If you work a full-time job, you have a set schedule, Set a schedule for your business. That's how I do it. That's why YouTube takes the back seat on a lot of shit. So sometimes I won't even post videos because I don't have time to do it. I'm either pressing t-shirts or dealing with clients or opening new contracts, or I'm at home on my couch, chilling with my kids, chilling with my wife, doing absolutely nothing. So to answer the question, schedule yourself some time, whether it's an hour or two hours, it might seem kind of crazy, but Make sacrifices on other shit that's kind of just mind numbing, right? Whether it's like watching Netflix, whether it's like playing video games, shit like that, you could sacrifice that time to work on business shit. Which brings me into my next question from the homie Darius. He wants to know how can he build his YouTube channel just like me? This one, I don't have no answers for. I kind of got lucky when it came to this YouTube shit. Fell into a bunch of subscribers, fell into a bunch of views, because all I did was talk shit into a camera. That's all I do now. If you took a really good look at my channel, like if you went back and looked at a lot of the videos, I didn't do the traditional YouTube thing. A lot of people do a shitload of collabs, so they share their following and share their audience with each other to gain more subscribers. This whole channel is built on my dumbass face on this camera talking shit. That's it. All I did was share information about my business i never came into this thinking i need to get a shitload of subscribers i don't even come on here and talk about smash the like button like and subscribe blah 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 i don't do none of that weird shit because all i do is just share the information and that's it traditionally if you looked at other youtube channels and content creators they ask people to subscribe and share their videos and do all that stuff i just ask people to ask your questions in the comments don't dm me the question 
just ask it in the comments because chances are I'll get to it a lot faster that way. But you never hear me talking that. Hit the like button and the notification bell and da da da. I don't do all that. So I'm probably the worst person to ask about building a YouTube channel. Like I said, I probably got lucky because when it comes down to it, like I talk a lot of shit, like I cuss in every single video that hurts my YouTube channel. I don't do the normal share notification stuff like that, which hurts my YouTube channel. And then I don't share a lot of the information that people want to hear. I kind of just talk about transfers and heat presses because the whole channel is built around how I run my business. It's not about doing reviews on shit or it's not about bringing new print technology and print processes for the industry here or I'm not reviewing viewing a bunch of different blank t-shirts all i do is share the information about my business with you guys that's it i use a heat press i use transfers i use all style and pro club t-shirts um i just got into embroidery um, i'm not an expert at it so it's hard for me to share information about embroidery because i'm still learning the shit just like you guys i share my marketing strategies i, I don't pay for marketing i don't I, I don't do stuff the traditional way i don't do stuff how everybody else does it like i said i don't do collabs with people maybe that hurts my channel maybe I, my channel would grow a lot more if i did do that kind of stuff but i don't do this full time i just do it when i have time um so my advice would just be uh document your journey and share the information and don't think about subscribers and views think about helping people that's all i do is um, what information would be beneficial to somebody else that's coming up behind me if i learned about these transfers i'm going to share the information about transfers with people if i'm running my business with a heat press i'm going to show how i'm running the business with a heat press so somebody else can make money just like me and make more of it than me that's my thought process when making videos is basically just helping i don't think about subscriber count i don't think of adsense money i don't think of getting sponsored or being a brand ambassador or any of that stuff It'd be like crazy if i just like came out of nowhere and was like check out this new air fryer that i'm using you guys should all buy this air fryer It'd be kind of crazy right everything on this channel is basically the stuff that i use and do for my own business and that's the information i share with you guys so when it comes to just creating a youtube channel and wanting to grow asking for subscribers probably isn't the best way to grow you just want authentic people that are going to watch you because of your journey because of the information you share and just being authentic to yourself that, that's about it that's all i can say that's all i've done like like i said look at my channel man i don't got nobody else on my channel i never use somebody else's leverage or following to build my following I just get on here and talk some shit. Uh, last year at ISS, I interviewed the T-shirt chick, Stan Banks, and Rye Beats. And that was because I hung out with them that whole weekend. And on the last day, I said, hey, man, it'd be cool to put you on my channel. Share your story. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, like a lot of the conversations I had off camera with these guys and girls was cool as hell. So I said, man, might as well share that information with everybody out here. But outside of that, you know, you don't see me on other people's channels. You don't see me doing much. You know, I make videos at home, I make videos here, and that's about it, or in my car. So if you wanted to learn how to become a big YouTube person, probably not the best person to ask. Um, the next one comes from the homie Conrad, and Conrad said, why are you still using a heat press? Why haven't you upgraded to DTG or screen printing? And to answer that one easy for Conrad is, I started out screen printing, and now I use a heat press different print methods for different reasons different print methods work for different businesses for my business heat press and transfers work best for me i find the most profit in those that's why i operate that way I have no need to switch up i have no need to quote unquote upgrade because it's just not for me why invest in whole new print technology when something's already working perfectly for me where i find the most profit i get the print technology evolves over the years and gets better dtg's dope dtf is dope white toner printers make it easy for you to print transfers from home cool for myself i order 100 transfers at a time how long does it take me to make 100 dtf transfers if i printed them myself why not just have the professionals do it for me so i send it out to supercolor they print them out for me i press them on they turn it around in like two days. Same thing goes for plastisol transfers. Why screen print my own transfers when I could have the professional screen print it for me, turn it around, I could press them on, easy call. That's all. Uh, the next question comes from Nadia. She said she does sublimation. How come I don't make sublimation videos because she likes learning from me? I appreciate that Nadia, but at the same exact time, I do do sublimation. I'm just not a professional at sublimation. I don't think I do it enough to share information about it um i make mugs and i sublimate on socks and masks 
that's it. There's way other doper people in the sublimation space that have a better understanding of sublimation like Gina Gill, Garment Creations, Odyssey Rock. These are just to name a few people that do sublimation and kill it at sublimation. Uh, for myself, I use a Sawgrass SG500. Um, and like I said, it prints out eight and a half by 11 pages. That's enough for me to do some socks, do some tumblers and mugs and do masks. And that's about it. But I don't do it every single day. Um, I just do it as orders come in. So if you're looking for sublimation help, like I said, Gina Gill from Just Say The Word, Odyssey Rock is dope on TikTok, Instagram, and I think he has a YouTube channel also. And then Garment Creations, I'm pretty sure most of you guys follow him. I think he even sells his own sublimation paper. Um, and then the last question is going to be from George or Jorge, and it's any book recommendations that I have that are inspirational. I read a lot of books, a lot, I do a lot of audio books, um, but the best book I could actually recommend is a children's book, and it sounds crazy, but as a kid, this book stuck out to me and it's called The Red Hen. The basic breakdown of the book is there's a red hen that wants to bake some bread. She goes around the farm and asks all the different animals to help her get water and flour and wheat and bake the bread and all that stuff. And everybody's like, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm too busy doing this. I don't want to help you make bread. I want to play all day or whatever it is. So she's like, fuck it, I'm gonna just bake the bread myself. And then when the bread is done, everybody smells it and everybody wants a piece of bread. Nobody wanted to do the work, but everybody wanted to reap the benefit. That book stood out to me because it just speaks on hard work. There's nobody else to blame but yourself when you're working hard. If you're putting in the work, 100%, your hard work, is the reward. There's a lot of people out there that are just standing around to pick up the crumbs of your hard work. That's why that book always rang a bell to me as a kid. And it's always either you help out or you get it for yourself. So if you want to get a book, check out The Red Hen. That shit right there, man, it, it's a life lesson that I live by. You could read The Art of War, you could read all these other crazy books out here, but that one is the only one that really stands out and sticks out to myself. If I didn't put no work in, my hand is not out asking for anything. I'm either working with you side by side or I'm doing everything on my own. That's the only way that I operate. All right, if you got questions, leave it in the comments. Chances are it might show up in one of these videos right here. And also, if your name is very hard to pronounce or if it's difficult or if it's spelled crazy, chances are I might not pick that question because I don't wanna butcher your name. All right, you can follow me on Instagram, Big Brando TV. Maybe we'll make this into a series. Maybe we won't. Who knows? Don't forget to like, comment, smash the like button, turn on the note. <laughs> I'm just fucking around, man. Appreciate you guys. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.